Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. In the last video, I looked at the Arctic sea ice. We're getting near the traditional end of season Arctic sea ice minimum. Um, usually it's about September 15th, we're within a week or two of that. And I wanna talk about how the, the patterns that the ice is taking as it's melting and where, where we're heading. So this is a continuation of my previous video. So just to remind you, if you go to Google Arctic sea ice graphs, and if you scroll down and click on the ice thickness, okay, then you can get, um, you can get snapshots. You have, we have 2018 and 2017, we click on this. We also have 2016, 15, and 14 by clicking on those. And what I do is I compare the, uh, the minimum, what the ice looks like in the mid-September mid minimum, and also I compare the maximums each year, which is about March 13th. So just, uh, just as a recap from my last video, this is uh, 28, this is, uh, let's go back here. I think I've lost it, here we go. Let's just move this over here. Okay, so this is the sea ice where we are, September 4th, 2018. And let's compare, remember that the, this is in meters. You need to multiply by 3.3 to convert it to feet. Uh, but basically the ice, he, the, uh, the ice that's left is, is very, very thin. Okay, there's some one and a, there's some one and a quarter the, the thickest ice here is two meters, the light blue color. Um, the almost blackish, dark, dark blue or blackish is one and a half meters. And then the light blue, 1.25, or the, the blue, 1.25 meters. And then the purple and the white areas underneath, less than a meter. Okay, so here's where we are this year. And you can compare the trend uh, to last year. This is what we had last year. Okay, similar, but there are some subtle differences. The ice is chunkier this year. Here it was more continuous. And if we go back to 2016, um, there's some thicker ice here. Okay, um, if we go back to 2015, there's some thicker ice, but it's sort of chunkier. And if we go back to 2014, there's a big difference here between 2015 and 2014. <coughs> okay, 2014 didn't set records in extent or area, things like that, but the sea ice thickness took a big downward, uh, crater downward here between 2014 and 15, if you look at what was left at the end of the melt season with the minimum. So the extent is minimum for the year, uh, but there's still, you know, there's still some thick ice there and you can't see that uh, over here. And uh, what happened is there was thicker ice here, so there was a lot of export. There, there was this ice act as, as, as a cork, basically, reducing export through the Canadian archipelago. But then, so that's in 2014, but in 2015 and other years, there's, that, there's, no, there's no cork anymore, so the ice can freely flow through the Canadian archipelago. It's another ice loss mechanism and also because the extent was larger there was more flow through the Graham Strait. Um, remember the ice is melting on the top from air temperature above melt freezing point, below from water temperature uh, melting the ice and then there's the ice melting along the edges quickly and then there's the export mechanism and then there's wave action that <coughs> breaks the ice apart and changes the, the uh, changes the size of the flows, etc. Um, and if I'm comparing, remember we can look at the, the ice is decreasing each month. So this is the 2018 maximum, 2017 maximum, 2016 maximum, some thicker ice there, 2015, okay? We've got a, quite a bit of uh, thicker ice there compared to what there is now. So again, big difference from 2015, um, uh, from 2015, the maximum to 2016, big, big drop. And then the minimums, it was the 2014 to the 2015, where we see the most noticeable uh, changes. Okay, so this is key. Um, 
So now what I want to look at is on Arctic sea ice graphs, I want to look at Zach Labe's um, Arctic sea ice figures. So let's have a look. Because these are this, this is a good depiction, actually, of what is happening. Um, so kudos to uh, Zachary Labe. Okay, so this is the... This is the sea ice extent, okay? Uh, this is a million square kilometers, eight million, seven and a half, seven million square kilometers, so 10 to the six uh, square kilometers. And the satellites, the ice is decreasing 13.3% per decade. There's year to year variability. Also, you know, um, there's oscillations. This is a fit, <coughs> okay? The, the, the line, you could draw a straight line there. You could also draw like an exponential curve, right? I mean, which one is more valid? I would argue that the exponential curve is probably more valid. When is this going to hit zero? That's the big question. Okay, zero for uh, you know, or under one for uh, so when it hits one, that's considered a, a blue ocean event. And this is the, 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 the these are individual slopes. Anyway, the trend is clearly downward rapidly. The Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. Um, there's a lot more open water, a lot less sea ice, which is highly reflective. The albedo is dropping. There's more and more absorption. Um, there's exponential effects here. Okay. Um, I have a glare here. I'm just going to get the light. Okay, that gets rid of the annoying glare. Didn't seem to have it in my other images. Okay, um, this is the, so the air temperature in the Arctic <coughs> as it rises over time and the sea ice extent as it drops over time. Okay, it's getting warmer and warmer in the Arctic. We have this Arctic temperature amplification. It's much, the changes in the Arctic are much happening much faster than anywhere else on the planet at the moment, and uh, we're losing the sea ice extent. Um, okay, uh, the sea ice extent is the part of the ocean with uh, at least 15% ice, and you can see how it's dropping here, but significantly the volume of the sea ice, if you multiply the actual area of the ice times the thickness, you get the volume and uh, that's also dropping uh, very, very rapidly. Okay, um, don't forget about Antarctica. Um, we've got Greenland, of course, up in the Arctic. When the Arctic sea ice is gone, Greenland will be the last bastion of ice in the Arctic. So the, the centers of action, if you like, of the <coughs> polar vortexes, etc., are going to shift. And Greenland will be the the center of action and it's offset from the pole, of course. So um, it's going to significantly impact, it's gonna lock in jet streams into a very, very different pattern from what we have uh, now. So, you know, I think the Arctic sea ice loss is going to be hugely significant in terms of extreme weather events that we experience. And we've seen a, a, a huge increase in extreme weather events, heat waves in the northern hemisphere, you know, wildfires, um, droughts in other places, uh, crop losses, prices are going to go up. Our global food supply is, is going to be greatly threatened, I think, when we lose Arctic sea ice because the center of action will shift from the, where it is right now over the sea ice to Greenland being the only place with a lot of ice. So when that happens, um, things are going to shift significantly. Um, this is showing the, um, this is showing the sea ice concentration over the last 100 years uh, up to 2013. Okay, uh, I'm trying to see the month here. Let's see what happens. Uh, so this is the minimum sea ice extent. Okay, at least September doesn't say there. Uh, there's different ways of depicting this. Um, 
the Arctic Sea ice extent. Smaller is darker here. So what you can see is um, you can see uh, the darker areas here <coughs> in, of course, the uh, summer months, June, July, August, September. Um, and you can see, you know, they're getting darker here as compared to here. Um, this is the anomaly, Arctic sea ice extent anomalies. Okay, uh, the baseline is 1981 to 2010. That's the climatological mean. And what we're seeing is you know, look at all the red coming here. Here's our minimum year, 2007. Here's our here, here's the record minimum year. This was set a record in 2007, was the lowest up to that point. 2012 set an overall record, which we haven't <coughs> meet, reached yet. This is extent again, and as I mentioned, extent can be a, a bit misleading. And this is uh, 2016, 2017, uh, 2015, 2016, 2017. So. So you can see, you know, the trend, you know, is, is obvious. You know, we're losing sea ice. This is the sea ice thickness. Now, anything less than 1.5 meters is massed out. Okay, so, so it's showing the thicker ice and it's showing, um, it's in August from 1979 to 2018. Okay, so what you can see is, you know, plenty of thicker ice in the 80s and 90s and then in the 2000s it starts to drop and here we are in the 2010s onward and it's basically vanishing okay you can see uh, clearly the, the thicker ice was multi-year ice in, gener in, in general um, so it was harder ice uh, brine pockets had were percolated through the ice so it was fresh you know it was basically fresh water frozen because the brine, the salt had worked its way out through the ice. So it had less inclusions. It was much more durable, thicker ice. And it's basically kaput. It's basically vanished. Now, if you look at the sea ice departure, the extent anomaly, um, what you can see is this is 2018 data. So here's the Arctic anomaly and the Antarctic anomaly, and then if you add, if you sum them up, that's the global anomaly. <coughs> uh, Arctic sea ice volume now, okay, so this is volume um, in a thousand cubic kilometers, 81 to 2010 average, and you can see what's happening in the 2000s, 2007 record low, 2012 record low, and uh, we're, we're heading down, so. Here we go in the 80s and 90s, and now 2000s and 2010s, and uh, you know the, the the trend is clear. The ice is going. You know, predicting what will happen from in one given year <coughs> is a bit of a mugs game because um, it's uh, it's it's difficult to do. You know, it depends a lot on on weather patterns, export, things like that. This is the sea ice thickness. The red line is 2010. Um, this is progressing through the years, so the ice was thick, and it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and uh, you know it'll reach a point where it just kind of, kind of collapses. You know, it has no consistency. In terms of Arctic temperatures, um, this is uh, the daily Arctic temperature. Now you can also get this. You can get this for each year. Um, if you go and click on the Arctic sea ice graphs, and there's a plot, I've gone too far, work my way up. Uh, here we go, there's a, the DMI, Daily Arctic Mean. You can get this plot here. <coughs> uh, where are we here? Okay, now what you can see is that the, um, this is the mean. It's it's we're getting much much warming in the winter months here. January, February, March, April. You know the the, the variation is much lower here, and the reason is is that the, the all the energy is going to melting ice, so the temperature is 